Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video. It's beautiful Challenge Beautiful Day. What's going on today? Just episode two of this beautiful 3D introduction series kind of. I, I like that. I, I like 3D introduction. Not really a 3D tutorial because, or well, a little bit of both. But I'm not a professional, like I said in the last video, at all in 3D. I like 2D, and I'm still learning 3D. And this is basically all I've learned and what I understood, and I think I understand 3D. So. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and, and work on this. Uh, I made a little coordinate system here I just want you guys to know what a coordinate system is because a lot of you might not know so we'll just do a quick Quick intro. This is a 2d coordinate system. So coordinate system sounds complicated But all it is is just points in this direction points everywhere. Just you know values in this direction. So this is a po this means one to infinity so a positive 1 to a positive infinity. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the same thing in the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Okay. So when you move a character in a top-down shooter, you're moving them in the y-axis and the x-axis. Okay. Like this. All over the place. And every one of these uh, pixels is a 1 or a 2. You know, like a, a value. So... One, two, three, four, five, six. Now they're so small I can't really do it, but one, two, three, four, five, six is like all the way up to infinity. And the same thing here, but this is negative one to negative infinity. And the center is zero. So this is minus one, minus two, and blah blah blah. Same thing for the x-axis. So that's a coordinate system. And how do I make this into a 3D coordinate system? Let me just do this. Let me do a y here. Let me do a x here. <clears throat> and a 3D coordinate system, basically all that is, is you add a z-axis right like this way and it's a it's a depth right it's going into the screen and out from the screen I can't really show that but imagine it coming towards your face so this is also like outwards and inwards it depends on how you look at it but I, I usually look at outwards as a positive and this is a negative uh, oh wait no 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 I think it's minus one minus I away from the screen or how, how is it you know it depends like on your hand or whatever but let's just say it's positive and let's say this is negative okay minus I but basically it's just to prove a point whatever uh, is that it's going out and in out and in into the screen so something is usually depth right it's it's deeper into the screen like it's far away your render distance your draw distance depends on the depth right so something really far away might not be as detailed as something closer and that's you know you can use the z-axis for that and uh, it's the same thing as so zero one two three four five and that's how you make a 3d coordinate system now if i remove the 3d coordinate system just for now and we just use the 2D one. Basically, it's the same thing. Uh, I just want to show you what a vector is. And then next video, we'll go into some vector maths. Okay? So I'm just going to explain with words in this one. So a vector is... This is a vector. Okay? This is a vector. And I'm going to make a little arrow here. Because a vector has a tip and a tail. Now, this vector's tail is in 0, 0. And let's say in pixels that this point is is uh, what what could it be? It could be 50, 50. So that's a positive 50 x and a positive 50 y. So that's why it's kind of going up to the right like this. And that's that's the point exactly at the tip, and it's at zero zero. So what is the what is the like how how big is this vector? Right, it's 50 50. It has this size. And it has a direction. It's going positive. It's going to a positive direction, right? Now, its size could also be shown like this. It's two vectors in one, right? It goes up. There's one vector that goes up like this to its tip. And there's one vector that goes like this to its tip. Okay? And this is kind of the melding of these two. Okay? These two vectors. Now, this is going... Uh, zero in the x direction and it's going upwards right because you can calculate a vector by taking the tip minus the 
you know, the tail. All right. So if we do that for these three, I guess that the first one would be 0, 0 to 50, 50. And that would give us 50, 50, right? Because that's, that's basically the tip. It goes from 0. If it would have gone from somewhere else, we would take that divided by, or that minus the tail. And then you get the actual you know, size of the vector in both the x and the y axis. Now to calculate the length, you have to do some calculations and I want to do that in the next video. But if we say this point is, is, is 50 and then 0, the tail, and that is 50, 50, and this is 0, 50, and then we do minus, you know, you'll see that this vector only goes in the x direction because we'll take 0 minus 50, or no, 50 minus 0, and that's going to give us 50 left. And then we're going to do 50 minus 50, which is 0. So you, you'll have a vector that has 0, 50. Right? No, 50, 0. And you see that it's going 50 in the x direction, but it's not moving at all in y. Because y is 0. Same thing for this vector. If you see that 50 minus 50 is 0, and it's moving only in the y direction, you get 50 there. Now, how do I know that a vector is negative? It's going the other way. Remember, always the tail minus the thingy here. So if this is, no, the, the tip minus the tail. Always the tip minus the tail if you want to get the direction of a vector, right? So 50, this is minus 50, minus 50, and the 0, 0. So if I would do, if I want to get this point minus this point, see how this vector is, then I'm going to do 50, minus 50, minus 0, which is still minus 50, minus 50, minus 0. If I want to turn this positive vector around, I would do the tail to, maybe that's a better way to show it, guys. Uh, let me do this. Let me do a, imagine another coordinate system, just like this quickly, and we do this. Now we want to make this vector this way. All right, and at the tail, we have 50, 50, positive 50, 50 and this is 0 0 all right so then we're gonna take 0 minus 50 for the x coordinate and then 0 minus 50 for the y coordinate and remember the tip is here and we're going this way so that's gonna give us minus 50 minus 50 and that shows that this vector is moving or has the direction minus 50 x it's this way and minus 50y downwards. All right, that's how you can use the tip minus the tail thing to get the correct direction for it. Now, I just want to show you guys uh, a little bit quickly before I end the video. That's just how vectors work. They have a size and a direction always. For example, a car going, oh, sorry, this isn't a car, but just imagine an object having a velocity. Now, a force and a velocity and stuff, they have directions, right? I mean, you can go forward in a certain amount, just like this. Or you can go backwards in a certain amount, right? Just like that. Sorry for my sexy drawing. And this is a negative velocity, or depending on how you look at it, uh, this is a positive velocity for us, relative, if we, we're in this coordinate system. Okay? And it has a size a velocity, a speed, and a direction. Same thing for anything. And a force, gravity, is downwards with a certain size and, uh, and, and so on. And we can use, in games, actually, we can use vectors for a bunch of things, a bunch of things like this. And current velocity, for example, I use in my games in my other series, has, I use them as a vector because you have a size to the, to the, in the x-axis and a size in the y-axis. And that size and those numbers give you a direction. So if I had minus 30, minus 50, I knew I was going this way, and I had a size of it. So that's the way it works. Now, uh, to end the video, like I said, I just want to make a circle, and I want to make a coordinate system. And I want to just, just introduce you to the thing that's called normalizing vectors, because a, a vector, to normalize it, is like eating food. Like, that's, that's what you have to do in some cases. And it sounds complicated, but it's not. Imagine you calculated how you want to look. Like your mouse pointer, this is your mouse pointer. It's here. 
and you want to make a 360 degree shooter. Imagine this is your mouse pointer and you have a point here which is uh, what could this we could call this 50 50 as well all right and this is the zero zero center and you have an object in the in here that you want to rotate to shoot towards your mouse pointer now it's not that easy all the time you don't want to use the, you can use degrees and trigonometry or trigonometry or whatever you call that <laughs> you know what i mean uh triangle like scene coast and stuff like that but if you want an easy way to which direction this projectile is going to go from your character or how many degrees your character should move what you can do is you make a vector from the center of that object to your mouse pointer all right now this vector is going to have these values all right and you want this projectile to move this way right but if you move it with 50 50 that's a lot of speed for a projectile. You don't want that. You just want to give it that direction. Then you want to multiply a speed with that direction to make that speed go this way. So if I have a maximum speed of 100, okay, that I want this projectile to go. It doesn't have to be a vector or anything. It could just be 100, a number. I want it to go, or like, or 10, 10 actually. You know, 100 is, is, is a little extreme here. But let's say 10. 10 pixels a, a frame so I wanted to move 10 pixels a frame but if I move it with 50 50 multiplied by 10 that's gonna give us 500 500 that's not what I want I want it to go maximum 10 but then like you know if 10 would be if I went straight up it would be 0 10 because I would go 10 in the y direction straight to the right should be 10 0 but this way both the y and the x is going to be a little less so it's going to be like 0 point something and 0 point something and how do I achieve that well I'm going to normalize this vector okay and imagine what you do is you just cut it you keep the direction of it but you cut the size of it so this is minus 1 in the x-axis this point is 1 in the x-axis this is minus 1 in the y-axis and this is 1 in the y-axis so what I do is I want to make this vector go from minus 1 to 1 at maximum but I want to keep this direction so then I'm gonna cut that vector down so and imagine the circle being the ones like this is the max it should go here it's like 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay right here 9, 9, 45 degrees is 0 0.5 0 0.5 so I'm gonna cut this vector down using a mathematical formula and what's gonna happen then is the mouse pointer is still here but the vector is cut down to 1. It's still pointing towards the mouse pointer. It's just that the length of it, the, the length of it is normalized, we call it. And it's 1 now. And I hope you can see the reason for that. Because now when we move it with the maximum speed of 10, we shoot something from here. All we're going to get is a, a direction that goes from minus 1 to 1. So if I'm shooting it this way, I'm going to multiply 10 on both the vector things or the, the x and the y values from the vector and we're gonna get 5 in this direction and 5 in this direction 5 in y 5 in x okay that's it and and that's how normalizing vector works you just cut it down to preserve the direction but not the size of it so no matter how big this is you just normalize it cut it down to minus 1 and 1 and you get the direction left so that's how it is I hope you guys understood this was a little babbly and complicated but i i hope i i kind of simplified stuff i'll show you the math in the next video so i hope you learned something this video take care and i'll see you in the next one all right bye bye